Hi guys. So I got my Waxnail VRX. Pretty cool little guy. Pretty thin actually. A little bit thinner than my HD0 VRX is. And I put this uh, rail mount adapter on it to mount it onto my HD0 goggles. That was designed by uh, Supervins. So I'll put a link to that in the description. So here's the HD0 goggles and here's the VRX. I just line it up on here and then push down and now it's firmly mounted on there and it is not going anywhere. Uh, very, very rigidly attached. I can use all the buttons and stuff um, without having to support anything or worry about it flexing around. So pretty cool uh, setup there. So I'm using the HD Zero goggles, of course, uh, because I've got them and I, I think that is a really good goggle to use with the system because it's got a 1080p screen on it, um, 46 degree, uh, 16 by nine screen. So nice and big. I've also got the Skyo 4X that I tested with, um, which is great too. And uh, I did find I have to run this exclusively in the 16 by nine mode. So in that mode, um, you're not gonna get to use the full FOV of the screen. I think, um, I think it's more like 42 degrees they end up getting out of it for 16 by nine. Um, I also tested it on my gaming monitor that's capable of 100 Hertz. Actually, it goes up to um, 165 Hertz. I did confirm that uh, the monitor said it was seeing 720p 100 FPS off of the Waxnail VRX. So that's kind of cool that it can do that. Um, but that also is kind of like a major issue with this VRX and uh, one of the things I'll be getting into. Currently, there's no goggle on the market that can do more than 60 FPS over HDMI. The HD0 goggles might be able to do um, 90 FPS 720p, but uh, I don't know if they'll get up to 100 FPS uh, 720p. And this system, the use cases for this system are a lot more limited at the 60 FPS mode. Um, Joshua Bardwell will tell you this, don't buy a 60 FPS camera for the DJI Vista uh, because it just doesn't fly very well. Um, most everyone will tell you the 60 FPS modes on a DJI type system or on a Walksnail type system don't quite feel right. Um, the latency, the lag is past the threshold where Pretty much everyone that flies that amount of lag will, will notice it and will quite a bit negatively impact how you're flying. And that's what I noticed too immediately. Another thing I want to address is this notion that you have to be some kind of a racer to notice the benefits of uh, HD0 or analog over something like um, a 60 FPS or a 100 FPS walk snail. And I, I really think that that's just bogus. Um, I, I, I wish you'd stop perpetuating that myth. Um, people really need to try things themselves to know for certain if uh, this latency stuff actually affects them. Um, I think different people are affected by it in different ways. Um, I think some of the fastest guys out there are actually um, maybe a little bit latency insensitive. They're just really good. Um, just as an example, I'd say maybe Evan Turner, um, world champion, right? And uh, Vanover and Bobby. Those are examples of guys that I don't think latency affects them quite as much. Um, so it must come down to muscle memory or something or some other ability. But I'm 34, I'm getting up there in age, I guess. And uh, maybe I need a lower latency system in order to compensate for uh, my age. Or it could be the other way around. It could be that as you're getting older in age, um, your perception of latency is changing to the point where you can't tell the difference anymore between uh, 10 milliseconds, 20, 30, 40, 50 milliseconds. Um, there's plenty of us out there that absolutely can, and you can take tests to go and measure it. But 
this notion that uh, only a racer would notice the difference and benefit from fixed latency from HD0 or analog, it's bogus. And I uh, really wish that that lie would stop being perpetuated. Um, I, I think it comes down to the individual and it comes down to how much flight time you have and what kind of flying you do. Um, if you fly slow, high, stuff like that, doesn't matter, I guess. Um, and in which case, you know, getting a bolt-on module for some, any kind of goggle is going to work great for you, and that's fine. But don't think that that applies to everybody. Um, and don't try to pinhole, pigeonhole. Um, analog and HD0 stuff into just a small little category because uh, it absolutely affects how you fly when you have these dips, uh, when you have a delay. Um, now before we get into uh, too much of the uh, kind of the bad news, uh, let's go over some of the things that I think are really good. Um, I think that this kit was really well laid out and uh, I was actually really impressed by how easy it was to set up and get running. Um, I just uh, desoldered my HD0 uh, VTX off of this Mobula 6 and then soldered on the walk snail onto there. And uh, actually, I didn't have to change any of the um, settings in Betaflight. Everything just worked. I had OSD and everything. So pretty cool. Um, went together all right. Uh, it's not soft mounted on there, which is going to be a bit of a durability issue. Um, there's also some weird stuff like how this cable here routes outward into your ducts instead of inward away from the ducts. I'm um, talking about the MIPI cable, so that, that's definitely a liability. Um, there's like a little weird things like that, uh, but overall I was, I was pretty impressed. So good job, walk snail. Uh, and also, when you power this up, and the, you got a bright room, um, or you're maybe you're fly outside, it looks really good. I was impressed. Uh, it looked every bit as good as DJI to me, and maybe even a little bit better at times. So that is really saying something. Um, like, good job on that, too. Um, so I started flying it in... Uh, angle mode, you know, because it's a whoop flying around inside. Yeah, this looks pretty good. I uh, I quite I, I like this. This isn't this isn't bad. Uh, and then I started to fly a little faster, a little faster, and something didn't feel right. Um, so then I, I flipped it into acro mode because sometimes, well, actually a lot of times now, I'm pushing myself harder to fly acro indoors, and that's where everything kind of fell apart for me at uh, 60 fps. Um, I was just hitting walls, hitting the ceiling, um, crashing constantly. Um, so I flipped over to my uh, HD0 build, flew that around, and everything was tight, locked in. I wasn't hitting the walls, I wasn't hitting the ceilings. You know, I was shooting through the gaps, as I usually do. Uh, they're both 60 FPS systems, right? So what's the difference? Well, the difference is, on this one, I'm at like 30... 34 milliseconds. Uh, that's like the first pixel response or something. So then you got to add a frame on top of that. So add 16 milliseconds onto 30 milliseconds. So maybe you're looking at like 45 to 46 milliseconds for a full frame. That's a lot of delay. And then on this guy, I think I'm looking at 19 milliseconds for a full frame or three milliseconds for first pixel response which by the way is, is about the same as analog. So I'm not trying to make any claims that this is uh, much better than analog for the delay. But the delay on this, like 45 milliseconds, that's just too much. When you're flying indoors, you know, I, which I am because it's a blizzard outside, you're gonna be flying in close proximity to things and uh, that's where you don't have the kind of the latitude, I guess, to, to fly more cautiously, 
to fly higher, to fly, you know, in a way where you've got a large buffer around your craft and you can take and be very careful when you're flying. So the 100 FPS stuff, um, I had to run that on my gaming monitor. I did run all of these tests on my gaming monitor just to be safe. I, I currently can't run the 100 FPS mode on uh, any goggle. Um, but I did run 60 FPS and 100 FPS on my gaming monitor. And I that's where I found that this system started to click, started to make more sense, started to feel more correct. Um, I started to fly more like I fly my analog and my HD zero quads. So that was pretty cool to see, um, but it still has the judder. It still has the um, inconsistencies when you're kind of diving around things, um, things that I'm used to seeing with the DJI stuff. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised to see it here too. Um, so you gotta keep that in mind, but yeah, it was at the point where it would be tolerable, I'd say. Um, you're still getting like, uh, it's reporting a system latency of 22 to 25 milliseconds, which I've seen others say that you really got to add another five milliseconds onto that, but whatever. Um, so that's your response time for the system. And then you, on top of that, you add on like a frame of delay. So that's going to be another 10 milliseconds. So you're at like um, 32 to 35 milliseconds total for a full frame. And, uh, yeah, kind of okay, I guess. Um, it's definitely better than the 60 FPS. And uh, yeah. Other thing I'll point out is low light performance was not good. Um, and what I mean by that is there's lots of noise, uh, noise that I didn't expect to see, but was uh, showing up. Um, and this didn't matter if I put it in 100 FPS mode or I put it in the 60 FPS mode. You would think 60 FPS mode would help because the shutter speed should be a little bit longer, but yeah, it wasn't that good. Um, so I'll put up some, some footage of that. Um, I did put the camera into its low light mode, the night mode, and uh, that did help also, um, but I saw a lot of noise in the sensor. And then as I started to get a little bit further down in the voltage on my pack on my 1S drone, uh, so say three and a half volts and below, uh, the noise started to increase and get worse and worse and worse until the point that the uh, battery gave out at three volts um, and there was a lot of noise. So that's interesting to see. It's also interesting to point out that it cut out at three volts. Um, my other systems will go lower than that like the HD0 stuff will go down to 2.8 volts and then analog stuff will go down even lower than that, which is helpful um, in scenarios where you're running like a punch out down closer at the end of the battery pack. So yeah, just a little thing to, to point out there. If I had to sum up the 60 FPS mode, um, kind of like the way it feels, it would be kind of like um, you're playing some video games, you're playing some Mario Kart or something like that, and you got a little bit of beer and basically you're driving drunk right in a video game and that's what the latency at uh 30 to 45 milliseconds feels like on this you go to make a left turn and then you you you, you see it move you're gonna make a right turn and then you see it move a little bit later um you don't feel like you're there in, in the cockpit. Um, I've done some looking online, um, looking at like VR systems and what kind of internal benchmarks these guys set for themselves. And uh, looking this up, I can put it up on screen here, but the target that they set for things to feel realistic and to not feel kind of nauseous and fake is the latency has to be below 20 milliseconds ideally uh, below seven milliseconds actually. And as you go higher and higher above 20 milliseconds, things start to get more and more disconnected. It starts to feel more and more um, nauseating slash kind of like drunk. Um, so that is how it feels. And uh, I mean, don't kid yourself. Delay is delay, it's physics. Um, 
you can try to fly around it, you can try to learn around it, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you are seeing a delayed image. So yeah, the one, but the 100 FPS mode, I was, I was pretty impressed with. Um, that was a lot better. That was more like flying a uh, 120 FPS um, low latency mode on DJI. So it, it's got better uh, tightness to it. I, I felt like I was flying like I normally fly uh, my HD Zero drones. A little, definitely a little bit more lag, and I definitely still felt the, um, the stutters and the kind of the inconsistencies and stuff. So kind of some maybe intangibles that might, you might not consider with this. Um, flying with others, you're going to be compromising their video feeds if you're flying in close proximity to them. Uh, so the thing I noticed is my analog stuff started to kind of wig out when I would turn on the, uh, the Walksnell VRX, uh, I'd start to see some distortion and some interference in the analog feeds. And that's because the system starts transmitting as soon as you power it on. And uh, it's transmitting from the goggle. So if you are standing um, with this VRX close to another guy that's got HD0 or analog, um, you're gonna be unfortunately interfering with their video reception. And that's not so polite to be doing. Um, and that's unfortunately just how this type of system works. And there's things you can do to mitigate it, but you really got to know what you're doing. And unfortunately, a lot of people end up uh, not knowing what they're doing. And um, it, it's just difficult. So these race timers have uh, a hard time with a two-way system like this, where what happens is the race timer is trying to pick up on uh, the, the frequency for the video transmitter and count that as a lap. And what will happen is your goggle will transmit, or in this case, the VRX will transmit as you're on the other end of the field, and uh, it'll trigger a lap. So that's an issue we're always fighting with, with uh, this type of a two-way system. And um, unfortunately, it's that's kind of how it is. So if you want to race, it's going to be a troublemaker, I guess. So that's kind of a wrap for this review. I uh, I really don't intend to scare you away. Um, it is kind of cool to have all of those options for low latency analog, um, low latency HD zero, and then high latency um, box nail on one goggle. Um, I will be using it. I just, I am very disappointed about uh, the 60 FPS performance of the system. Um, and that is going to be limiting how I end up using it going forward. Um, but that's fine. Um, I've got analog and I have HD zero all on this goggle uh, for how I would fly in those other ways. So now you are informed and I'm pretty sure that uh, most of the other guys that review this thing are, are not going to cover the type of detail that I cover on how, in terms of flight feel, uh, which is unfortunate and I really want to see more conversation about that in the future from everyone. Um, as I believe that is uh, a missing piece of this review puzzle. All right. Thanks. I'm out of here. Merry Christmas.